morning, good afternoon, and good evening. It's your girl Chuck Tay, and I am here with your RDTV Sports Break. You can catch me here every Thursday, talking junk, spitting facts. Let's get started. So, we will talk about All-Star Weekend, but the first thing we're going to talk about is the slap her around the world. And in case you missed this, Michigan and Wisconsin had a game over the weekend, and at some point, Michigan is up way in the lead, like 15-ish points. They put their walk-ins in, and Michigan is still in this full-court press. Put their walk-ins in. Walk-ins can't seem to get through the press. They, their time, their 10-second count was dwindling down. So the coaching staff decides, okay, we are going to call a timeout, get that 10-second count, reset, let our guys kind of regroup, so on and so forth. This pissed Jawan Howard all the way off, okay? So it gets so bad to the point that at the end of the game, the Wisconsin coach is coming, trying to talk to Juwan Howard. He kind of grabs him, which it's like, mm, I get it, don't touch me. They have words, and basically Juwan Howard gets in his face, puts his finger in his face, kind of grabs him, grabs him up. So now the benches are, are coming in. And there's a lot of hustling and, you know, you know how these girls like to tussle, right? And then all you see is Juwan Howard, one of these, kind of like that meme of that little boy where he just be coming at you like that. Go in your room. Go. That's what it looked like. Um, so he slaps. It's not funny. It's not funny. But it's funny. So Juwan Howard slaps. Um, Joe Krabenhoff in the face. Now the players and, and the, uh, there, there's a little tussle, little tussle going on. Um, so of course this is unacceptable behavior. I mean, across the board, regardless of who it is, it's unacceptable. Let's not also forget that Jawan Howard, this is not the first incident he's had as a head coach, right? So now he's suspended for five games, which is basically the rest of the regular season, at least as we are inching towards March Madness. Um, so he's suspended for five games. He also got fined $40,000. Um, the other coach got fined. The assistant coach got from Wisconsin got fined like $10,000. Um, the head coach isn't getting fined or suspended or anything like that. A couple players got suspended from both sides for throwing punches, so on and so forth. Now... I I understand I understand Juwan Howard being upset. Like y'all don't have to act like that. Like y'all could have took the 10 second count and wouldn't have matter. We're we're not going to we're not gonna win, right? We're not nothing is gonna happen if you get this 10 second call. Like it doesn't change the outcome of the game. So I kind of understand that. But my guy, like you have to be a little more in control. He claims, you know, he does say, I didn't like that they did that. It really upset me. Um, but really why I hauled off and slapped my man was because somebody put their hands on me. Now, again, another thing I can understand, because I ain't a killer, but don't push me. Like literally don't push me. Don't put your hands on me. But again, you you have to have the wherewithal as a coach, really as a human being, right? To be like, I'm not about to be out here just fighting. So it it is, it is an interesting, it's interesting because now, of course, Joanne Howard has put out this statement via the university. Like, I, this is my alma mater. I'm a Michigan man. I hold myself with pride in this and blah, blah, blah. And, but I shouldn't have did that. You know, of course, all the ADs, both ADs are like, oh, well, you know, this is, this is unacceptable behavior. We're apologizing to families and coaching staffs and universities and all of the things we got fines and all of that. So here's what I am interested to see. And we'll, we'll kind of look at this as it progresses, if anything else comes of it. But like I have mentioned, this is not the first Juwan Howard incident after becoming the head coach. Um, he's been there, what, like three years since 2019. Again, we know Juwan liked the tussle. We all saw the documentary. And you clearly have brought that here in your old age, sir. So do I think they're going to flat out fire him like right now? Nah, probably not. Um, do I think he is on less than thin ice? Absolutely. Because if you think about it, first of all, the Fab Five documentary is my favorite sports documentary of all freaking time. Okay. So if you watch it, or even if you just know anything about the Fab Five, the um, alum, 
right? Did not appreciate the Fab Five as a collective. They were ghetto. They were too loud and boisterous and thugnificent like for, for the alum, right? And the donors and all of the things until they started like winning games. So if you look at it from that perspective and then fast forward a couple decade, if you will, and you're acting in a similar light, I don't know. On top of that, you're acting like that in a similar light and you're losing. I don't know. It, I don't know how secure his job actually is, but you know, don't shoot the messenger. I just work here in this office. I don't work at Michigan. I don't speak for nobody. We'll see what happens, but we will see what happens. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Now, all-star weekend it came it did something tis gone Whew. okay so i'm not gonna hold y'all i knew it was coming friday i don't know what i was doing but it was not with my full attention on the what basically was team greek freak versus the cavaliers um the skills there's just you know okay listen Listen, listen, and listen good. I have been upset with the All-Star Weekend situation since they took away the East and the West team because you cannot give me the argument of, well, one team is always stacked when you then turn around and let the players pick their own team. Like, one team is always going to be stacked because it's the team that gets the first pick, he's picking the, I guess, third best player in respects to the two team captains. Like, so Team LeBron was stacked. Not saying Team Durant was scrubs, but Team LeBron was stacked. You could have just left it as East and West. So that's number one. Number two, y'all, there's so many, like, is change inevitable? Sure. But some of the changes that we're making are just actually and honestly and truly completely unnecessary. I don't appreciate that they took the older generation players and the WNBA out of the skills challenge. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed Adele Curry and um, at the at the time a Sue Bird, you know, as a part of the All-Star. I just didn't think we needed to take that away. Um, so that's a personal gripe that I have. Now, COVID, honest to God, I don't even remember watching an All-Star or anything last year. I, I could not tell you what I was doing last year because I do not remember watching it. Um... Now, I know it was kind of abbreviated because of COVID last year. We're trying to get out of that this year. So they were doing the most. And it was the 75th anniversary of the NBA. Uh, so just a lot, lot of things going on in, in Ohio. So let's just, let's just start with Friday. So like I said, I did not give my full attention to what was happening on Friday. What I do know is the skills challenge went from a individual competition to a team competition so like I said it was team Greek freak it was all of the brothers um Giannis and company and then a few players from the Cavs um Evan Mobley being one of them they went through all these series of unfortunate events um and then team Cavaliers comes out on top they won the whole thing I mean it was very lackluster I just I don't no one really gave me a reason as to why they switched it to the team model but again my full focus was not on that so Cool. Saturday. Now, let's let's start with the dunk contest. <sighs> because again, another change that we didn't need. What happened to the time limit? Give them a time limit. I like I swear to God, I was folding clothes and watching this at the same time. And and I was on the phone. I'm like having a whole conversation watching this folding socks or whatever. And it was like five minutes that went past. And I'm like, why am I still looking at, at Toppin? Why is he still dunking? Did I miss a round? No, this is the same round. This is the same dunk. What? Put the time limit back. Put it back. Put it back. Or at least limit the number of attempts something, but just letting them dunk after dunk after dunk. And I get it. The rule is if it's not in a downward motion or whatever, you know, like there's a rule as to how, why they get so many attempts. But like... If you leave the ground, it should just be an attempt. Like, um, Cole Anthony and them stupid Tims. Oh, my. Like, first of all, second of all, third of all, I don't know what of all I'm on, but that of all, that number of all, I haven't enjoyed a dunk contest 
in the last maybe like five years. Zach Levine, come back. You clearly got it still. Just come back. What I just, that fool put them Tims on and I almost turned it off right there. I, uh, why? Because why? What was, what was the reason? What was the reason? Why did you put them heavy Tims on and you couldn't even get off the ground? It was just a waste. It wasn't even showmanship. It was, it, it was not given what it's supposed to have gave. It was like, boo, tomato, tomato, tomato. I, mm, I, it's a no for me, dog. And then, um, what's his name? With the, he put the phone on that he didn't even really dunk with. He gave it to Isaiah. It was just like, what are y'all doing? I just, I didn't like it. It was the worst. It was probably the worst dunk contest I ever saw, but... I digress. Obi Toppin, um, he wins it all. I don't know that it was hard to do. He had, if I'm not mistaken, the most, I, he had the most points, obviously. I think he also completed the most amount of dunks, which really isn't saying anything because I think across the board, they only got really two or three off. Like, I, it's just, it was trash. It was trash. Now, three-point contest. Another change here because Mountain Dew, three-point contest sponsor, added a couple. So you have your racks, right? They added a couple extra spots that were not quite rack level that were worth a couple more points. Three-point contest was not terrible. Carl Anthony Towns ends up winning. He was a sleeper. They were not expecting him to win at all. Um, the favor was with Trey Young, but Carl Anthony Towns, Towns, Toms. Carl Anthony Towns <laughs> wins with 29. Um, it was it was fine. It was just nothing was really giving. I just used to be so excited about All Star Weekend. I and now it's just like a thing that happens and it just tells me like, oh, now that this is over, real, real, real basketball begins because now we're in get to the playoff mode. So now they really gonna be out here hooping. And that's all I personally care about. So whatever. Um, so that was Saturday. Now, Sunday is is the day. And obviously, all of these things lead up to Sunday. The whole point of the weekend is Sunday. Like, I got it. So we have Team LeBron. We have Team Durant. Kevin Durant did not play. A bunch of other people ended up pulling out for various reasons. Chris Paul hurt his thumb. He got some minutes, but he wasn't, like, really playing. It was kind of a like, let's get him on the book situation. He's going to be out for the next six to eight weeks just as an overall thing. Um... Kevin Durant doesn't play. Donovan Mitchell pulls out at the last minute due to an upper respiratory non-COVID situation. Um, James Harden wasn't playing, which we already knew that walking into the weekend. Not that they really wanted him to play that bad anyway. but mm. um, So a lot of people kind of out with injuries and, and, uh, and the like. Team LeBron... I will say the all-star game as a whole, I enjoyed. You know, LaMelo did some things, you know, and I am not overly compl complimentary of anybody with the last name ball i'm i'm just not that's a personal preference i just don't really prefer them as a unit um but Lamelo came in did some things he gave a little razzle dazzle traveled a lot but you know whatever um see lebron wins 163 to 160 lebron turn around one leg Wins the game. That's it. That's all she wrote. Steph Curry is, of course, the story. First of all, they booed Steph Curry all weekend. Every time I turned on that TV and saw that man, they were booing him. It's like, Cleveland, who hurt y'all? I mean, it was him. But, like, let it go. Just let it go, okay? But Steph Curry, 50 points, two, two points away from at least tying with Anthony Davis's 52-point record. He does break the three-point record for most threes in a single game. He had 16 threes. The record was 15. The all-star record was nine, so he smashed that. Of course, he's the MVP. Team LeBron goes 5-0 and in all-star weekend or all-star game. Of course, LeBron is like, oh, because it was in Cleveland. This is my city, even though he's from Akron, but... I guess in his mind, same difference. He's from Ohio, so cool. We'll give it to him. You know, he's all excited. Of course, they've been asking him, is he going to stay in L.A.? What happens if Bronny ends up in Cleveland? All the things. He's going to go wherever Bronny goes. It's not about money. All right, cool, whatever. Now, as I had mentioned before, the NBA was celebrating 75 years. So in the middle of the game, at halftime, you know, 
there was a celebration of the top 75, you know, NBA players. So, of course, LeBron, Steph, Michael Jordan, Shaq, um, Gary Payton. Just I'm just, like, naming random people that are popping in my mind. But, you know, we go through all of the players. Um, of course, Kobe Bryant. All of, you know, all of the people that were there, that were able to be there, they were there. They had a couple people that were not quite there. Then, of course, you have a couple players that pass, that have already passed away, you know, Kobe Bryant and so on. Um, I found it very odd that we did, we needed to do this in the middle of the game. Like, it was at halftime. There was a halftime performance, I think. Um, actually, no, there wasn't. There wasn't. But they, it was nice. The, the entire thing was nice. I just... If you were going to do that in the middle of the game, and I know that the all-star, you know, the weekends, the places, the venues, arenas and such are booked out like much in advance. I just feel like somebody in the back office should have been like, oh, well, this is the year it falls 75. We should probably do this in a West Coast town because like the all-star game didn't even start until eight o'clock Eastern time. So it just like it was like almost midnight when this stuff ended and I don't know. I just, I thought it was kind of odd. But again, personal preference, I, I just probably would have did that in a West Coast town. I would have planned out a little better. But it was nice to see all of the players, um, you know, they had they had their, their blazers on. They they kept showing them, you know, throughout throughout the game, throughout the weekend. It was it was a real, you know, um, NFL Hall of Fame gold jackety kind of moment. And I enjoyed it. You know, you got a bunch of players, you know, they brought Dirk in, they, you know, Steve and all of the players. So it was nice to see them get together um, and and do all of the things. Of course, as the last couple of years have been, uh, Team LeBron, Team Durant were playing for charities. Um, so, you know, you had a, a couple different ones. Whoever wins gets, you know, their money goes to the charity. Um, lots of focus on United Negro College Fund, historically back black colleges and universities, things like that. So, of course, as a product of an HBCU, I always appreciate anything that is going to support the HBCU community and such. Um, so that's always nice to see. I really want them to just go back to regular All-Star Weekend. I shouldn't say regular, but just some of these things I just, I just didn't need. Or maybe as we are continuing to ease out of this COVID situation, um, maybe we can get, a, get back to a couple things that we somehow got away from. But that's just me. Again, as always, this is just my personal opinion. Who am I? Just a person talking to an iPad. So that is it for me this week, guys. Um, no blissful moment or whatever I'm calling that segment at the end. Um, but what I will say is March Madness, tis upon us. It's coming. I am excited. We are going to do some brackets. We are going to look at some things. And it is going to be a grand old time. But for now, that is it for me. You can catch me here every Thursday talking to Spit And Nicole with your weekly RATV news break. Each Thursday at 12 noon Eastern, we'll come to you with the latest news, trends, and more with a positive spin. We know there's a lot of positive news that doesn't get reported, but we want to give you the opportunity to share your story here on RATV. If you have a positive news story you want us to share, you can submit your story to news at re-tv.net. Don't forget to subscribe to the Relationship Entertainment Television YouTube channel. Download the new RATV Live app on your mobile device and follow Relationship Entertainment Television on your favorite social media platform. Don't forget, make sure you tune in to the RATV News Break each Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Until, Until then, then, be blessed and be great. 
Growing up in the church, we saw a lot. Things that people refused to talk about. The elephants in the room. Mental illness, sexual abuse, broken family, domestic violence, and so much more. The Big E, The Elephant in the Room is a show that sheds light on these topics. We're here to speak about the unspeakable. Hey, it's your girl Tia Robertson. I'm the host of Entrepreneur Insider. Eastern for entrepreneurs and news that you need to know about. See you there. Welcome to What's Going On. My name is Demita Joe. Each Wednesday, you can find me here at 3 p.m. I'll be over here discussing different things that are going on and try to bring you a boost of positivity for your week because we all need this. We're going to share some feel-good stories. We might find a hometown hero. We may take a look at some trending topics. And sometimes we might even find a lesson in a not-so-warm and fuzzy story if we can. I'm Demita Joe, and I'll see you guys on the next episode right here on What's Going On.